what's up, Metal and Heavy Music fans? It's Flight of Icarus again with MetalTrenches.com, and today I've got five bands to recommend for fans of Dimu Borgir. And hey, if you like to be kept up to date with the best and brightest metal bands and albums from the underground and above, then stick with me by hitting that subscribe button down below. Alright, first up we have Empyrean Throne out of Lake Forest, California. Empyrean Throne's 2017 album Chaos Born is Dimu worship right down to the dramatic strings, croaking shrieks, and occasional ICS vortex sounding cleans. Or I suppose you could argue it's more like 75% Dimu Borgir and 25% Anal Nathrak, and sometimes with a touch of Middle Eastern instrumentation as well. Furthermore, it reminds me of Dimu at the height of their game during the puritanical euphoric misanthropia or death cult Armageddon years. Who doesn't want more of that? Crushing guitars, well-implemented classical additions, and strong production from Mick Kenny of Anal Nathrak, wouldn't you know it, really broaden the scope of their truly epic sound. If you're craving more of that 2000s extreme symphonic metal, Chaosborn will not do you wrong. Next up we have Zornheim. This is a Swedish band featuring former and current members of Deviant, Dark Funeral, Diabolical, and Facebreaker. As much as I dig a talented synth player, there is simply no replacing a live orchestral performance. The best albums from both Dimmu Borgir and Septic Flesh by a large margin have always been their forays into choirs and enlistment of various philharmonics. And while 2017's Where Hatred Dwells and Darkness Reigns isn't quite Death Cult Armageddon, that same extra mile definitely shows. Aided by solid production, Zornheim have a sound that is lush and layered from the melodic black metal guitar hooks and solos to the classical atmosphere. Furthermore, there's ample attention paid to dynamics, most obvious with the well-placed interludes, but also some awesome set pieces like the head bob inducing string and bass drum break towards the end of Whom the Night Brings, and more Middle Eastern sounding influences on the track Hestia. Zornheim is a very talented band with a bright future ahead given the right marketing. Their skill definitely rivals current outings from their similar peers even if they haven't quite reached the peak of their capabilities just yet. Then we have North Carolina's Rafumets Well. I have been a champion of this band for a few years now from the modest beginnings of 2016's The Exile to the very strong 2018 album The Elders Anthology. Tracks like Crucible of Titans perfectly rekindle the same feeling I had back when listening to Spiritual Black Dimensions back in the day. Their latest collection condenses down their best material into a solid 50 minute or so running time, and as such offers perhaps the best representation of what Rafumet's Well is capable of to date. Other highly recommended tracks include Resurrecting the Bloodgate and The Betrayer. The band also sports more than a dash of Flesh God Apocalypse flair, but instead of medieval imagery and demons, we get soaring sci-fi operas that feel more akin to the fifth element than King. Non-stop line, women, and I love the more progressive approach to the songwriting and interplay of the death vocals with the female sung cleans, as well as the ripping guitar solos and variety of different sounds from the synthesizers. This is a band that puts their own twist on the formula and really makes me look forward to hear more from them in the future. Next up, it's Dark Portrait out of Athens, Greece. This band and their 2017 album A Harrowing Atrocity takes me back to the first time I heard Midian and again Death Cult Armageddon. I feel as if the traditional approach to symphonic black metal has been somewhat waning of late, but Dark Portrait seem intent on bringing back the elements that made it so popular to begin with. With the dramatic, gothic overtones of Cradle of Filth and the harsh heaviness of Dimmu Borgir and also Karish Angren, this band has all of the makings of success if provided the right audience. 
Furthermore, the implementation of classical piano, choral synths, and occasional female operatic vocals all show the marks of professional songwriters, arguably more so than the latest releases from their better known peers. At no point do I feel like this is a campy, overproduced romp through a vampire romance novel or tired expression of old ideas. He doesn't want to hurt us. He doesn't feed off of humans. He wants to help us. I wouldn't necessarily call it original either, but Dark Portrait has more genuine heart and vitality behind it than the forerunners have had in a good decade. And last but not least, and probably the most controversial choice on this list, I'm including Connecticut symphonic deathcore band Shadow of Intent. Now hear me out, I am aware that deathcore is about as far a cry from black metal as a genre can get, but there are moments on their 2019 album Melancholy that straight up sound like they were ripped straight from some secret book of unused Dimmuborgir ideas. <laughs> Tracks like Embracing Nocturnal Damnation, Gravesinger, and Underneath a Sullen Moon make these parallels crystal clear not only in their powerful symphonic elements, but some of the vocal deliveries as well. Yeah, you're still gonna get the breakdowns and deep death vocals as well, but I'm telling you that if you're a symphonic black metal fan looking to even just dabble in a genre you might otherwise avoid, Shadow of Intent are definitely the band to do that with. In any case, lots of diversity on display and one of the most exciting bands out there of the last few years. And that's it, y'all. Those are five lesser-known bands for fans of the mighty Dimmu Borgir. Let me know which one was your favorite down in the comments, and also what other bands might you have included that I left out. And hey, stick around, because I got plenty more videos coming right after this one. Album reviews, tier lists, I actually have a Dimmu Borgir tier list, interviews with bands on the podcast, you name it, we've got it. So again, plenty of reasons to subscribe if you've not already. Also support us on Patreon. But that'll do it for now. Flight of Icarus signing off. I will see you in the trenches. That's right. I have eights and it's advancing very quickly. 